all about medium wave. Medium wave is radio. Back in the old days, let me turn that down, because you can hear, that's, that's medium wave today. <laughs> Back in the old days, before all that noise, um, medium wave was radio. You might have a little transistor radio that you brought that would probably only have medium wave on it. You didn't need to say what band you were on back in the, in the old days because it would be on medium wave. When entertainment domestic radio began in the 20s, you were on medium wave. 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, it was all medium wave. In the 1970s, we started moving to FM for improved quality and stereo FM. In the USA, um, medium wave has continued for speech radio, which makes sense. I mean, what they do in the USA tends to make sense. In the UK and in Europe, we tend to be closing down our medium wave services because to transmit on medium wave, you do need big transmitters. You need massive antennas. Well, of course, there's some radios here that you can see. They've all got medium wave on them. That one there, that portable there. Um, you've got another portable up there, although that's a replica. The X data has medium wave on it. And of course, a communications receiver, uh, this, this FT840 has medium wave on it. So what's changed over the years? Well, I think people have become quite conscious of quality. So um, they've moved to FM. There's actually nothing wrong with FM, but in the UK, we tend to be moving more over to DAB and digital broadcasting, which has given me work on stations, so I'm not gonna knock it because the radio authorities seem to be uh, more relaxed about awarding licenses to digital services than they did for AM services. Back in the old days, when you put on your radio, you would be listening to a medium wave station. Here in the United Kingdom, we had our pirate radio services playing music, playing pop music all day on medium wave. In America, you had your great music top 40 stations all WABC, WFU, all, all on AM, all on medium wave. Where do we stand today with medium wave? Well, as I mentioned, in the USA, still going strong with speech stations. In the UK and Europe, we're in the south coast of the UK here, they're closing them down. Stations of massive transmitters are being turned off very, very regularly. So we're, it looks like there's some gaps coming up there. I think one example of this is the station on 648 that has been licensed. That used to be the BBC World Service on AM, on medium wave. And that's been licensed to Radio Caroline, which is a group of volunteers that have put together a station, a sort of museum station, if you will, um, to replicate the pirate radio ship, Radio Caroline, that was very successful um, in, in the 60s, and eight, 60s, 70s and 80s. And I wonder, as we look forward, whether the authorities might be willing to let us do something with medium wave as the big stations close down. Because otherwise, it's, you, we're going to have these radios, this radio here, all these old radios with medium wave on it and nothing to pick up. Wouldn't it be nice if we could uh, have a series of low power radio stations licensed by the authorities? We shall see. Don't hold your breath. In the meantime, um, one thing that troubles medium wave quite a lot these days is the noise. All your Wi-Fi routers, TV boxes, computers, all this computerized equipment really affects medium wave. This is, you know, that is about a strength nine. So you've got to get us to be fairly strong to break above that. There's not much we can do about that. We can DF our antenna a little bit. We can get our antenna and see if we can null out some of this noise. You're lucky if the station is coming from that direction and your noise is coming from that direction. I find a portable slightly less noisy um, because a lot of the noise, I believe, does come through the mains. That's our main problem. If we go back to the old days, I mean, when I was a kid and I used to listen to the pirate ships, Radio London, Swinging Radio England and Radio Caroline, you know, I don't remember a lot of noise. Those stations weren't very strong where I lived. Maybe if you're listening in the USA, you'd listen to a station from another state playing the, 
music that you like. You can still pick it up on your portable without all that noise. These days, you probably wouldn't get it. It would be drowned out with the noise. So that's the downside to, uh, to medium wave today. But I find it very exciting. And as these stations close down, we, we can have a little listen, it's, especially in Europe, you know, where we're ending up with empty spaces, these big giants closing down. And uh, if you tune around, you might get something from a bit further away. I think it is a shame in the UK where a lot of stations that are on FM and also on DAB also are still clinging on to their AM frequency. Close down. It's costing you a lot of money. Sometimes we're paying for it out of our license. So uh, close down. Let's have a nice clear medium wave. And then we can, do, us enthusiasts can get our little radios and tune in and maybe pick up something, something quite interesting. Can we have a conversation about medium wave? What is your favorite medium wave station from many years ago? that may not be there anymore, probably isn't there anymore. If you're in the US, it's probably turned into a sports station or a talk station or something. Tell me a bit more. Tell me more about medium wave. <laughs> Let's have a chat about it. Thanks for watching this video. I'm sure there's lots more to say that I've forgotten um, that I intended to say. I really ought to start making notes. But thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you next time. Long live medium wave. This has been a Long in the Tooth television production. Subscribe to Peter's channel for more short bites of information for the radio generation.